All right, just a quick one before we get going. So please don't take anything you hear in today's episode as financial advice. Please speak to a trained professional if you do wish to participate in markets. Crypto is inherently risky and you will lose all your money, particularly if you listen to us for financial direction. So enough of that. Please give us a like, subscribe, enjoy the show and see you next time. Uh, good local time, everyone. Uh, welcome back. Uh, we've got two guests from Skillful AI. AI has been a big narrative, um, not only in TradFi, but in crypto as well. Um, it seems like things are starting to get really interesting in the AI space. We've gone beyond, you know, chat GPT asking questions. These gentlemen have come up with something really, really interesting. Um, They'll tell you about it because I'm still in the process of discovery. Uh, Emmanuel, brief intro in terms of who you are and what you do at Skillful AI and welcome. It's really good to have you here. Hello. Nice to meet you, Jedi. Of course. So my name is Emmanuel. I'm the CTO at Skillful AI. Um, Skillful borns as a company that ambitions to bring decentralized AI to the masses. My background is as a machine learning engineer. I've, I've been working as a passionate data scientist slash machine learning engineer for the last eight years. And I was working a couple of years ago back in Apple when I realized that I want to, to pursue um, something that can actually impact the world positively in terms of AI, because there is always this uh, huge bubble that people are super excited by using AI, but there is also this concern of whether or not it is dangerous, whether or not it will replace us. So at that moment, I decided that I want actually to empower people to make use of AI in a responsible way that they can actually leverage their skill set and benefit from this usage and this interaction by removing all of those concerns that at some point they will be replaced by these AIs. So in a nutshell, Skillful is this ecosystem that will empower users and developers to monetize their AI creations and um, Granting them with fully own ownership of these assets. Awesome, awesome intro. Thank you, uh, Zoltan. What do you do at Skillful AI? And welcome. Great to have you. Hi, hi. Great to be here as well. Nice to meet you for the first time uh, as well. Yeah. Uh, so my name my name is Zoltan Broker. I'm the CEO of of uh, Skillful AI. In terms of my background, um, I first well. Generally, I'm coming from a business background, and in the last few years, uh, I've been head of R&D divisions in terms of uh, technology at, at two companies as well. So evaluating lots of new technologies, how to bring them to the market, how to make a good fit. So this is this is what I uh, have been doing as well. Um, uh, I've been studying in an academic way about blockchain as well. Uh, I did the master's degree back then, and this is kind of just prior to that. Uh, when I got into the crypto space and started to pay more attention to it, it was in 2000, late 2015, early 16, something like that. Uh, and actually, I paid my first tuition in Bitcoin back then. So that's how my story started, started uh, in, in, in the crypto space. And I've been paying attention to it ever since. Uh, and the story how we all got together and, and, and had this baby, a skillful AI. Uh, we actually were part of a part of a like a micro degree uh, program together uh, when we learned about um, you know projects and just you know how to uh, how to create something unique in the industry and this is how we met um, and then yeah Emmanuel uh, introduced what we are building in a nutshell I guess so great um, really cool good. intro um, yeah so also good to meet you. Um, so I think just diving straight into it, I think the 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 big question, I think just in general, like just looking at a general consensus is that, you know, obviously AI has got like this really useful element to it, but at the moment it almost feels like it's limited in its capacity and, and its and its use case. And and I think that's where you guys come in and what really interested me about what it is that you guys are doing. Um Emmanuel, I'll let you kick it off. Like in terms of where AI is now, you know, and, and, and its limitations, where do you see kind of like the scope of what AI can fulfill? I mean, obviously it's a bit of a trick question because I want to know a bit about what you guys are doing. So you can obviously let us know, but let's look at the general overview at the moment. We've got chat GPT, we've got, you know, this all this possibility. Where do you think it will go and where would you 
ultimately like to see it go? Yeah, absolutely. So the first thing that we need to think about it when, when discussing the current state of AI is that GPT models are good in just one thing, which is generating the most likely next token. So this is known as generative AI, and they are good like generating text mostly. And by this, by this application, we have uh, been able to achieve a amazing performance in a bunch of use cases. And that's how ChatGPT now is like one of the best performing tools in terms of AI by just leveraging this concept. So that's where we are right now, that LLM's models are good on generating a sequence of texts. However, they are a bunch of limitations. So there is this new trend that is uh, that consists of augmenting an LLM model with a series of tools or external databases so they can perform more complex tasks. So in terms of the upcoming years, I would say that we continue seeing two main trends. One, the LLM's models will continue decreasing its size, and that's good because that means that they will fit in different devices such as our local computer or mobile phone. So we will have like AI locally. And the other trend is that they will continue like um, growing in terms of the tools that they are able to use. They will uh, be able to make use of different APIs or external databases so they can um, perform, as I said before, complex tasks. Does that answer your question? Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, just just jumping on to you, Zoltan, I mean, even with these complex, complex tasks that, you know, AI is solving and potentially could solve from coding to you know sending someone to mars or whatever the case might be i mean obviously that's within the realm of possibility there's obviously this whole idea of ownership you know like who actually owns that information um i'm contributing even as a researcher so if i research something and i write an article and it's and and we call it alpha obviously ai can pick that up and then that no longer becomes mine it becomes general knowledge how do we almost commodify that information as ours? Do we lose it once it's out there? I mean, even like original pieces, books, all that kind of stuff, is there a line that gets crossed when AI comes in and essentially plagiarizes that information? Plagiarizes. Well, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. In general, uh, I guess in a sense, uh, it's kind of lost in, in the current state. Uh, I guess, uh, but we are we are bringing a solution to that as well uh, in terms of in terms of a proprietary memory solution, which is basically the the general user data, and then Emmanuel can talk about the more uh, tech side of that. Uh, but yeah, so there is we are seeing lawsuits. Uh, there was a very famous one, uh, for example, you know the New York Times between New York Times, OpenAI, and Microsoft. So there was something like this about about plagiarizing uh, these articles. So, uh, so yeah, in general, I say right now it it does uh, not get lost in a sense, but it's it's really hard to track back where the information came from uh, for everyone, I guess. Okay, great. So, Zoltan, what is what is what are you guys doing at Scale Skillful AI? that kind of like distinguishes you guys from your general AI model, which is like chat GPT. So let's, let's do a comparison between the two and just tell us a bit about what skillful AI is and what you guys are planning to actually achieve. Okay. So, uh, well, first of all, just, uh, answering the first question in terms of how, how it is different in our platform. Uh, we are we are going to be providing first of all full personalization in terms of the models, which is which is not out there. There's really a, uh, in general there is a kind of one size fits all approach at the moment that has you know the limitations that we already talked about. But what we are going to be offering uh, is a um, you know just enabling a fully uh, decentralized storage of data for uh, for the personal data. Uh, what's being uh, used for these models as well. So it either can be, you know, can be tracked back where it came from and therefore it can be monetized uh, as well. Again, Emmanuel will probably can give you a better technological explanation of, of, of how the uh, memory and the vector storages work in that sense. But that, that's being one of the main difference. Uh, and as I said, therefore, uh, 
we can also uh, bring in the monetization aspect. So for example, if we have a skill, uh, you can make an AI asset, digital AI asset that can be working for you in a sense, or even, you know, it could be, could be monetized and could be making you money. So essentially scaling, uh, scaling your craft here. So yeah, hold on, just platform. hold on a second. What yeah. you're saying is yeah. that if I have a skill, right? So I, yeah, I'm a great writer and, um, and I'm a creative writer. I'm a researcher. How do I capture that knowledge and how do I then so what you're saying is I can capture that knowledge and then I yes. can sell that knowledge or that skill to however many people I want to, as opposed to just the New York Times or, you know, Blockmates or whatever the case is. I can actually, how do I package that? How does that work, Emmanuel? Exactly. Uh, can this is, so this yeah. is where my disconnect yeah. comes in. And so you're saying, I've got a skill, I can I can take it into, yeah. I can basically transfer that skill into AI and then yes. I can take that skill and I can sell it somewhere else. Yes. Okay, so exactly. my brain right now is going, Poop, <laughs> and you need to explain. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. It's a beautiful question. Thank you for asking it. I'm super excited to have this discussion. So I, I want to also come back to your previous question on whether or not this is violating IP and something like that. Yes. Let's let's try to illustrate it with an example. Right now, we have like these huge LLM models that they, they have been trained in, a, let's say, all the information available on the web. Let's say that they have been trained to to process and create text in a Shakespeare style, right? Because they have been trained with Shakespeare data and let's say all the books that Shakespeare wrote uh, a few years ago or some years ago, they are now um, aware of that knowledge, quote unquote, and they are able to generate text with a certain similar style, right? So you can ask to ChatGPT to write a book for you with a Shakespeare style. And there is a a tiny line where whether or not that it's violating like IP rights. But now let's try to extend this example with a modern case. Let's say that you are a modern Shakespeare, right? You have um, an amazing writing style. You have uh, a series of uh, notes or, or blueprints that you have created. And you want to also empower your day to day with AI, but you are worried or concerned of sharing this information with ChatGPT or, or any other model. Because at the moment that you share that, that pretty much is made public, right? Other users will kind of have access to this information. So what a Skillful AI plans to do is actually to uh, allow you to train a model. And by train, I mean fine tuning, which is a technique that we can discuss later. But basically, we um, enable the users to select a base LLM model. So this LLM model already has some base knowledge. And you can fine tune it by adjusting a tiny percentage of the model knowledge in a custom data set or a proprietary data set or a skill that you have. So let's say that you have these blueprints of your or your books or whatever information you want to train the model, and you perform this fine tuning technique that generates a new series of weights or model parameters. So these model parameters are used, as I said, a small percentage. It could be like less than 1% of the total model parameters. And you will own these, these numbers or these parameters. So at the time that you need to request a model with certain tasks, you're going to grab the base model, plug in the custom weights or parameters that you just generate by the fine tuning process, plug in those weights to the base model and ask it to perform your task. That's how you can train your model with your own set, uh, set of skills or knowledge and leverage this model for your day-to-day -day task and also um, monetize it because you can also enable certain users to, to get access to these weights that you own. And that's how you, you will always have fully ownership and control on this IP that you have created. Does it make sense? Yeah, it does, it does make sense because, I mean, I... I, I... I do sense like there is a visualization of the process. I mean, I know that you guys have seen, I've seen kind of like the, the process from a, from a graphical representation where you actually like take the parameters, you define the parameters, you, you obviously drag those boxes. Um, and I think for anyone who's listening or watching, just go to the skillful AI website and go and check out exactly 
what Emmanuel has described. It's really interesting is that that he's explained it really well, but if you go and look on the website, it makes complete sense because essentially what you're doing is the parameters are essentially a box that you drag from my understanding, and then you're obviously putting in or you're entering that information in. Now, my question is, how do you define the knowledge? How does the knowledge get transferred? Like, because obviously you're providing a framework now, right? So my understanding is that you provided a framework. These are the different traits or parameters that you want to put in for this thing to learn and whatever knowledge you want it to learn. But how is that knowledge then transferred? Is it a process of typing in stuff? Is it a process of it kind of like going with you on your phone? I mean, how does that actually like work, Sultan? If you could just allow me to understand, like practically, how do I actually teach the AI what yeah. it is that this knowledge is? Yeah. It's both. It's both. Yeah. I know that this question yeah. is for Sultan, but let me uh, set up yeah. the context. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Go for it. So <laughs> when you're mining your AI assistant as an NFT, you will be asked to input the data that you want to fine tune this model. So you will be able to select like uh, different examples of some thought process of actions that you want to fine tune this model to perform in a similar way yeah. that you would do. And then that all, that only that's only the first step. Then your AI assistant is generated or minted and then it, as you continue engaging in conversations with it or in, in interactions with it by asking it to perform certain tasks, you can always get feedback to the assistant on whether or not it should sit in the task that you ask it. And that process, it's an actually an ongoing process that enables the model or the assistant to continue evolve and continuously learning new things. So, so so how do you prevent other AI from coming and copying exactly what it is that you guys have built? Yes, because at the end of the day, the model, what is seen, you ask the model with certain prompt or natural text, but yes. in order to process that, the model, it consists of a series of layers, right? Uh, artificial and neural network that process that text and perform a series of mathematical operations, let's say matrix multiplications mostly, but um, all of those parameters are not public, right? Are not visible. Yes. So only what you can get access is to the base model. But at some point, yeah. the the input went through all the base model, and now it's interacting with the, with the custom parameters that you generated that only you own. So that's how we wow. uh, prevent other users to get access to the same knowledge that you only yes. you own. Okay, that's that's excellent. I mean, it, it will be really interesting to see how how it develops and kind of like how AI attempts to copy. You know, not and I'm not I don't mean like copy to steal the information and use it to go and sell it also, but essentially, you know, ChatGPT learning off the back of other people's skills and how much they do. I mean, how much of that information gets readily available? So if I sell you my skill to research effectively and you like the way that I research and I get my AI assistant and I sell it to you, how much of that information is available in terms of open source versus information that's just not available? How does that work? Do you want to get this Ben Sultan? Well, that's, that's probably, that's probably for you as well. Okay. I mean, like, okay. Like, yeah. Go on the NFT side as well. Yeah, absolutely. So, <laughs> so yeah. that's that one. That's one of the main reasons of why skillful AI uh, comes to, to our mind. And it's because as you interact with ChatGPT, let's say that is the most common example, right? You are giving to it a lot of information that you own. And most likely what is happening behind the scenes is that they, there is a filtering process that the best prompts or instructions or knowledge is being used to continue training this model. And that's how chat GPTs or open AI's model will continue getting better as they use the data that the users are sharing to improve these models over time. However, um, obviously this will be like proprietary IP that this big corporation is keeping, right? Instead of yeah. giving you the ownership and, and the value that you're actually sharing uh, is not being recognized or, or value at all. However, in our approach, what we actually envision is like to a, enable users to make use of these AIs, training them with the knowledge that they have 
but always own this series of weights or vectors. So they can plug, plug in this, this series of vectors with other uh, open source models as, as they need, or they can even just, just sell this series of weights to other users that will benefit from that particular skill set that you train the model. So in terms of open source, that was your, your initial question. I would say that open source is, is catching up very fast because obviously there are a lot of advantages of using uh, open source. So actually the best open source models are now as good as ChatGPT 3.5 and even with less parameters. So there, there will be always um, an incentive of using uh, open source and developers, may, most of the developers will continue like growing that framework. So we all can benefit from open source technology. And at the end of the day, what we plan to do is like everything could be built up, upon or up to open source models, but then just a small percentage of the knowledge is owned by you. And that will yeah. be, that becomes like uh, cards that you can exchange with your friends. I have this skill, you have this one, let's, complement them and create a new a new AI asset. Brilliant. Um, Zoltan, just from the business side of things, because obviously at the end of the yeah. day, you know, there's, there's, there's all these amazing ideas. There's another technical question, which I'll come back to, but I want to, I want to just understand what does this business model look like at its most basic level? And then what would mm -hmm. be like the ultimate dream around this? this whole thing in terms of skillful AI and the potential that it has, like as a, as, as a, as a money generator, mm -hmm. an employer and all that kind of stuff. Well, okay. So, uh, so the basic, the basic business model, uh, and we are getting to all the use cases that that's possible. So, you know, just normal paid access, like freemium model as well. So we're going to keep it definitely very affordable. So there's going to be like either monthly fees or fees to train a model as well. Everything uh, is going to happen, you know, you know, native token on the platform sky. Um, you know, so, so even something that we call royalties, if you created this uh, researcher um, AI, let's say, and that's uh, on our marketplace as an NFT, it either can be hired for a certain task just to research this, or if there is a longer edition, it can be bought. Uh, so in terms of the platform revenue uh, that you know generates revenue from the platform which we are planning to share by the way with all the users and holders of sky as well uh, and also the fees uh, as well and from your perspective uh, if you are uh, creating an ai that's successful obviously there will be review and trust ratings and everything like that and then people are using it uh, then most of the revenue generated by that, it's going to go back to you as the creator as well. So, so, so is so, this the yeah. case of if I need somebody to design a website for me, is this a skill yeah. that could be purchased and then you engage with it as the user to instruct, okay, well, uh, this is the design that I have in mind that will then give you options. I mean, is this the extent yeah. of what it is that you guys? Yeah, essentially, yes. That's that's, that's, that's pretty that's damn. It that's could be pretty yeah, damn cool. It could be. It could be. Yeah. So basically, uh, AI is up for hire, uh, actually. So if if you are the owner or creator, you can put it up for, for hire. We like to use it more than more than the normal staking and lending, because they mm -hmm. are performing tasks. But uh, but that's that's essentially that's essentially. It. We also have another aspect to this, uh, which is very similar. Uh, except there is a um, verification process and a bit uh, different training there, what we call branded AI, and that's for for influencers, for example. So if you have uh, if you have already a following, and if you have like books published uh, or anything like that, you have your podcast, YouTube videos, whatever, uh, you can you can create, for example, you know a Jedi AI of yourself that can be interacted with as well and you know have have all your videos uploaded all your publications if you have that even even some research and that can be turned into an ai as well which is what we currently call uh brand ai yeah. so that's essentially like social media on steroids i mean that's what that sounds like it's kind of like well i yeah, don't need to it is. You, you, could, you could call it that i guess yeah yeah wow that's amazing and and uh, i think in terms of like the the technical question that I wanted to ask, Emmanuel, one for you, is like, is this a process of 
AI being able to learn from other AI. So if I have a skill that I'm selling, could somebody buy two different skill sets and then train a third one off the back of those two? Or is it kind of like, is that information kind of isolated? Or can you have crossovers of AIs? Or is that something that hasn't really been done yet? Or is it something that's been considered? Um, <laughs> <laughs> it, it could be, it could be. The, the most important yeah. thing is that this AI field will continue evolving and growing at a very fast rate. So yeah, all of these things will uh, continue being a trend. And from my perspective, uh, in the skillful AI ecosystem, yes, you will be able to comp to integrate different skills and from that create a term, let's say. But yeah, in the in the upcoming future, we, we have already seen like a pattern that we are using even AI for training AI and to get feedback to AI. So in the in the coming future, we will continue seeing like how AI is used to generate or to refine other AI models. Okay. So, I mean, the complexity of AI is almost like, it's almost like watching the Terminator movies. You kind of like, okay, well, if I go back in time and it's like, I don't know if you guys have that same experience. When I think about AI, it's like it really does kind of get that feed, feedback loop going. And I think the question that I want to ask is, like, what does the future of AI look like? Um, Zoltan, from your perspective, like, is it really like everything that's going to be done on a process of AI where, you know, even our, the way that we use our computers, like getting in the car, I mean, how do you see kind of like, you know, the future and AI in it from your perspective? Well, there uh, is, a, and the movie is a really, a really, really good example. I had these had these thoughts at the beginning as well, yeah. to be honest. But uh, but I think in 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 my point of view, there is obviously two extremes of how people are talking about this, of how I think it, and this is what we are trying to be part of, uh, and essentially, you know, be. Um, be building something uh, on this field as well is to be, um, I guess, be aligned uh, and be in cooperation with these technologies as well. So actually, without replacing us completely, uh, giving us, uh, giving us, I uh, just, um, you know, scaling up uh, all the processes, making us more efficient. So essentially, uh, just have a combination and a cooperation rather than a complete replacement of what we are doing as either business people, creators, whatever. So uh, that's going to be the first step. What the what the you know longer future holds for this, and how far this is go with uh, with even you know now the implants and everything that's going on. It's really really hard to predict, and <laughs> I really yeah. really um, don't want to go there. Uh, but in in the foreseeable future, I think, uh, and again, this is what we are trying to build is to you know have. Uh, have just as have them as support to make everything easier and just more efficient, uh, yeah, more time efficient, more resource efficient uh, for whatever we're gonna be doing in yeah, general. Yeah. Let me add something here, yeah, because there is there is this concept of human in the loop or expert in the loop. That yeah. I think that it will continue being necessary. Like you can have AI doing all, a lot of different crazy things. But at the end of the day, you always need a human to validate whether or not you want to actually perform that action. So in the skillful AI ecosystems, for instance, let's say that you are a doctor and you train your AI assistant with the knowledge that you have on how to treat certain diseases or illness. And then you can have it like reaching to your patients, doing a preliminary analysis, but probably at, at the end of the diagnostic, you want to actually ensure that what the conclusion of the AI assistant is making is actually true. So you can actually validate that and give the final answer. So how I see it is that there always will be uh, some human interaction uh, in the process, but the main, the main goal is to um, reduce the amount of tasks that are not like truly important in certain processes. We can leave that to AI and humans having more free time to to actually focus on what matters the most. So in terms of the kind of like the AI that you guys have developed, I mean, there's, there's, there's obviously certain abilities that the AI would imagine 
is like better at doing than say your even your latest version of chat gpt and how what is the biggest challenge around keeping that kind of information updated is that like you release it once and it does its thing or is it a constant process where you guys have to be essentially engaged with the software and those parameters and kind of like the criteria that you put out there it's a constant process for sure the good news is that you can uh, continue training use a small percentage of that of the model parameters so it continue it already have like a base knowledge that you can that you can always leverage and continue evolving from that without the need of retraining a whole model from scratch okay so it obviously does learn from itself and then you guys obviously in turn can do whatever upgrades that you seem that you deem necessary regardless of what that might be um Okay, so just kind of speaking more more to kind of like what you guys are doing in the space, and you know, obviously you've developed this what sounds like an incredible product, and and I know, and I've seen the front end of it; it looks really cool. Like I said earlier on, go and check it out um, on their website. It's it's like it really does make the process, from my understanding, really straightforward, and it's almost like a self-explanatory thing, which is obviously on such a complex topic. I think that like a job well done from my perspective. Um, so definitely go check it out. Uh, I think obvious question is when token and what is the purpose of the token in that process? Uh, okay, so the plan here, uh, which we are on track for right now, is probably uh, when, when, when token, it's probably, uh, we are aiming for Q2 at the moment. It's obviously we are going into the raising rounds now, we successfully completed the ninja round. So there's obviously a few variables, but, but this is what we're aiming for. Uh, and the function of the token is to be in the utility for the whole, whole skill for uh, ecosystem, basically. So everything is going to be paid in that. Um, all the, I guess, the revenue for the creators, like, for example, your researcher example, it's going to be in that as well. There's going to be certain incentives for developers. Uh, and just ecosystem development, uh, we are calling that. So we would like to attract developers to come uh, and create tools as well, not just like complete assistance, if you like, but just tools that can be integrated within the platform. Uh, and that's gonna be that's gonna be covering everything uh, in the ecosystem in general. So from the royalties to the fees, uh, everything. Uh, it's gonna be it's gonna be a medium uh, medium of exchange within the skillful AI ecosystem. So you guys are launching on on ETH, right? On mainnet. Yeah. 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 Right. So you're gonna do you're gonna do potentially launch Q2, and then will you do a TGE soon thereafter? Yes, exactly. Yeah, yeah. That's the that's the okay. that's the plan. This is this is how this is how everything looks like right now. Okay, there is. Great. There is one more utility that I'm truly passionate about, and we haven't discussed uh, yet, which is around community models. You know that when you interact with these yeah. AIs the way that they use right now, you can ask it any question, but you don't know what was the true source of information. So let's say that for really sensitive topics, they can be kind of biased or prohibited in certain topics that, yeah. as I said, are sensitive. Yeah. So in our ecosystem, uh, another use case would be to actually track what data is being used for training certain models. So you can imagine a DAO, for instance, and DAO would like to generate a model in certain topic that is truly sensitive. And they, the members could vote on what information is actually used for training that AI. In that way, this DAO can generate a, a community model for that particular use case. And you can always have certainty on what information was, was used so you are like uh, avoiding bias the model from certain perspective or at least having some uh, visibility on how the model was trained and on what information. And I truly think that uh, that's a, an additional use case of our token to actually stack uh, mm -hmm. our tokens to being able to vote or to decide uh, what information is actually used for training and generating certain community models, which I'm truly passionate about it. So basically, basically, what you're saying is you get AI to buy 
all the tokens and then vote everybody out and then they can run the whole process. <laughs> <laughs> well, in the Terminator well, movie. <laughs> yeah, I mean, obviously yeah. that's, I mean, I, I am joking, but at the same time, that's my next question is kind of like, where is that, that line, you know, where does that line sit in terms of, AI that becomes autonomous and actually becomes its own worst enemy and our own worst enemy. Um, maybe not necessarily Terminator style, but you know what I mean? It's kind of like, is there something that you guys, is that something that you guys have obviously discussed and, and put into the code? And, and I mean, how does that actually work? You know, is, is there essentially that, that switch that exists? It is, and it is not that it does dystopian as you would imagine to be. Because as I said initially, the current state of AI, they can only generate the most likely token based on a series of, uh, or a sequence of texts. So yeah. just by um, limiting the kind of actions that they can perform or they have access to, you are already having that like in a, a control environment. But obviously, it as AI continue evolving, it would be super important to always develop AI in a in a in a conscious way that you are actually uh, taking into account the worst case scenario, right? So that's something that we are uh, also super uh, aware and passionate. But with the current state of the art, it's not that dystopian as you would imagine it to be. Great, um, and I believe you, by the way. And, and and just just one more thing because uh, we are also working with certain partnerships that are like AI companies that have like different use cases or application, and we we actually see like a, a good um, collaboration with them in order to also use AI for ethical purposes and for at least having like a a secure way to know what's the purpose of certain task or who who is behind the scenes using AI. So. That's not like the main application of a skillful AI, but that's something that we ambition to bring to our ecosystem through collaboration with other companies. Great. Yeah, I mean, I think, I mean, what's really cool about crypto is that it does encourage and almost it's necessary to have those partnerships, you know, whether it's, you know, kind of like having AI manage like the best yield processes across, across DeFi. I mean, we've seen that with a number of protocols, which I find to be like super cool and, and obviously very useful because you don't have a hundred hours to sit down and work out where the best yields are in DeFi when you can get AI to do that stuff for you. And, you know, if you guys can come along and, and, and build a layer onto that, that not only finds you the best yields, but then teaches you the best yield optimization strategies, whether it's looping, whether it's lending, then borrowing and then looping that and then transferring to another, you know, chain and doing the same thing three times over. That's the kind of thing that I'd love to see, you know, especially as a DeFi native, um, because I think sometimes things do get a little bit complicated and then that chain of thinking, you like, you get lost. And imagine having an AI model or an AI example, and especially in the way that you guys have presented it from a graphical representation, explaining to me, okay, this is what you do and this is the step-by-step -step process. I would use that pretty much every day, you know what I mean? And I think that's... I'd love to see that kind of thing, um, you know, going into kind of like the evolution of the AI space. Um, in terms of your roadmap right now, just can you just outline, you did, Sultan, you did mention that you guys have done a raise with angel investors. What's next? What does the roadmap look like? Um, obviously, TGE is one thing, but just give us a summary in terms of where you guys are going and what your journey looks like for the next 12 months. Are uh, you on mute? Yeah, I do that. Yeah, I do that all the time. And I, yeah, and I just left it, <laughs> left it like that. Uh, okay, so uh, basically, we have started the development of the actual platform now. Some of the foundations have been laid, uh, and we might show you a little example after I after I finish this uh, roadmap of the little model hub that we are with, what we are planning to release. If we if we have a chance, and if you if you are interested, yes, that. Yes, and then Emmanuel can talk about it. Yeah, uh, so we can do it in a minute. Basically, uh, that's gonna be the first next focus is gonna be gonna be on the race development is going. So we are coming out with a an alpha kind of product. 
uh, very soon and then laying the foundations for the platform. Uh, we're planning to release it by the, by the end of the year. As I said, probably Q2 at TGE after the race. Uh, we have invitations for lots of events, so on our channels, everyone's going to be able to see that the first one is being uh, in May, and then basically there's something uh, after that uh, all the time. Uh, but for the for this year, it's probably going to be about the launch and just development uh, and making the product as 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 good as and as polished uh, as possible right now. So we're working on the smart contracts. Uh, right now, everything uh, is on track right now, it's planned. Uh, so thank God, you know, there's little little humps and then we always find <laughs> find something to do, but that's it's normal with every project. Uh, and this is, uh, that's, this, this is how we are looking right now in terms of roadmap for, for the next, for by, by the end of the year, not even the next, for next year, but for the year. So we're aiming for that. TG uh, or a launch uh, in in Q2, uh, so and then so you, you know, guys have you guys have you yeah. guys have also made a point of making this whole kind of thing interesting by giving away serious amount of money. So if anyone's listening, yeah. um, I know that there's a series of quests, is my understanding, that's going on at yeah. the moment. Um, yeah, yeah. So tell us a bit about that. Okay, so uh, we have a quest going on right now at the moment, but uh, all the people can see and mainly mainly uh, on our uh, on our X channels on Twitter, and there's a little website to it as well. We are releasing three little clues uh, every week uh, that's uh, that we are representing with 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 the treasure with the safe right now. So when you see when you see that safe anywhere on our channels, we are probably in the right place. We are releasing three clues that's giving the solution of those three clues or three words uh, every week. We are uh, just went into week uh, six recently as well. So this is this is the seven now. Uh, and then soon uh, we're going to tell everyone probably in like two weeks time of what these words are used for. Uh, these are actually very fun challenges to do. Uh, all across the internet, uh, we're going to be gaming, fighting it with some NFT games uh, as well. Uh, and whoever is going to be uh, smart enough, and I guess have the have the have the patience, have the interest to solve all of these, there is more than uh, ten thousand dollars worth to grab for one smart slash lucky winner here as well. Wow. Okay, I'm going to definitely have to get my hands. Can we have a chat after this interview? Is that possible? No, yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah that course, sounds awesome. Course. Wow, that's that's a lot of money. Um, that's a lot of yeah. money. It doesn't matter how big your wallets are. Ten grand is mm -hmm. a hefty amount. Well, at so least it might. Is it, it might one, be more? Yeah, it might be more. So does does winner yeah. get it all, it's or is it designed? Thousand, yeah. So when it yeah, gets one, it all, one, one it's person not... will. One, yeah, winner gets it all. One person gets it all as well. Obviously, wow, if awesome. if some people I heard about people trying to solve it in teams, that's obviously you know yes. personal agreements between them. Uh, but essentially, it's designed uh, designed to be you know one by one person. That's awesome. So show us show us what you wanted to show earlier on. You're very welcome to share screen if you want to bring it up. Absolutely. Um, it's, yeah. yeah, there's the ability to do it at the bottom. You can see it. So. Okay, just let me rearrange so, some tabs. So, have you guys had quite a lot of interest and like, are people talking a lot about this this quest and this money at the moment, like within your socials? Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. We have we have a we have a channel. There's some some quests as well that gives um, certain roles to people. So there's a little community forming just around this, and I'm getting some messages. You know, everyone's trying to get like extra clues from us on a daily basis. Uh, so yeah, it's 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 interesting, and the and the and the quests themselves are pretty pretty interesting as well. When we were designing them, it's actually uh, it was the original idea and he spends the most time on it uh, jacob or stanley harrison who is our ceo and he, he likes this stuff so he spends uh spends quite a bit of time and we're just having a lot of fun with it ourselves as well and so are the players so. sounds cool okay so tell us what we're looking at sir 
Absolutely. So what we're seeing right now is the beta of our model hub. We decided to start um, with our first product being an educational tool to educate people of, on the wide range of LLM models that exist more than just ChatGPT. So we create this platform where people can come and compare how each model uh, will behave by certain prompt. So the idea here is that you come to the platform, can select from a wide range of different LLMs. Most of the open source models are already here. We have also included some um, uh, proprietary models such as OpenAI GPT-4, also some from Anthropic, uh, Google, and so on. So let's select like a few different models. You will see that also the number of parameters is uh, displayed here. And for this one, I'm gonna select OpenAI. In terms of the different models themselves, is there kind of like a library of information that gives you a breakdown of what each one is? So yes. someone who isn't, okay, so I see that. 100%, 100%. So there is, there is a short description and we plan to continue launching educational resources to teach people. And that's actually the main purpose of this platform, to teach people that there is a wide range of LLM models and each of those have like different pros and cons. So for certain tasks, you would rather have use of uh, uh, one or other. So the, that's the main thing here. Um, so, so, so I mean, I've got a just a, just a quick example. If I if I wanted to develop AI that could assist me in tracking down new contracts that are being released on mainnet that could be potential meme coins or shit coins or whatever the case is, I could use something like skillful AI to assist me in that process. Is that correct? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, and what's, yeah. what's coming next for us is to actually extend because these are like foundational models or base models, but in the whole skillful ecosystem, mm -hmm. this is just the first step. Then we extend or augment these models with a series of tools. So what you are describing will be like adding a on-chain API to query data, right? or certain API that uh, allows users to perform certain actions rather than just generating text. So in the whole skillful yeah. ecosystem, the first step is always select the base model. Then you add a series of tools. Then you add your custom knowledge or your proprietary data, and you finish the process like mining or generating this, this AI assistant. So what you are seeing here is just the first step to educate people on how different models behave and what are their limitations and the advantages. So for here, I'm going to use uh, input with a base prompt. This is a mathematical operation, quite simple, but the, the whole purpose of this is to see like how each model would respond differently. And also the, the latency, it's quite different. So, and this, this is a tricky question because LLMs are not good performing math. So, they actually they actually lack at reasoning if you don't prompt them correctly. So with given the prompt that I use, you will see that all of them fail. Even chat GPT4. It yeah. it was the closest one, but it failed. The true answer is uh 360, uh 3660. So it's funny because you will see that each of those is is the following like a different thought process. But at the end of the day, none of them was able to actually give them the proper answer. So we, what we envision with this tool is that users could uh, playing around, get some sense of what they, their models are good, what they are bad, and at, uh, start like deciding what models they want to include in their AI assistants. Does that make sense? Wow. Yes, it does. Absolutely. I mean, obviously, there's quite a a long process I would imagine around kind of like figuring out which models will be optimum for whatever um, instruction that you want so is there kind of like a a shortcut around this where you where you actually get examples of okay this is where the strength lies in this I know that there is an explanation but in a practical sense is there a way of kind of like I know this sounds really strange and a little bit maybe like old school, but is there kind of like an ability to do like a wizard? Is that something that could be considered, you know, like a wizard around, okay, well, what do you want this thing to do? What are the criteria? Okay, we we think that this would be a good recommendation around this model. 
and this this is potentially the result that you would get. Hundred percent, hundred percent. Yes, okay. that's part of the skillful AI ecosystem. As I said, here we are just comparing base models. But at the end of the day, you don't want to use any of these base models. You probably want to use a pre-trained model in certain tasks that you want to perform. So, for instance, if you are a developer and coming back to the to the previous example that you gave us on building a web page, probably okay. you want to to select not a base model, but a model that has been fine-tuned for generating code or generating web pages. So you as a developer will be guided through a process where based on your needs, the base model will be selected. In this case, a model that has been fine-tuned for coding tasks in particular. And you can also perform an additional fine-tuning round with the web pages that you have built in the past, just to give this, this particular model that has been already teach how to build code or to generate web pages you will have the ability to also perform a final fine-tuning iteration to not only having them knowing how to build or generate code, but also how to generate code in the way that you like or with the style that you like to, to deploy. So that's a great question. And yes, uh, once this is fully completed, we gonna expose a bunch of different models uh, pre-trained for different skills and tasks. Yeah, I mean, one of the interesting things around that, you know, like, especially when it comes to what we do as content creators, like one of the challenges for us at Blockmates is that we want to remain authentic, you know, like really deep research and orientated around that authenticity, you know, and, and, and there was a debate that that's come up on a number of occasions where you know, we've had writers in the past who have used chat GPT to kind of like do grammatical corrections and the rest of it. But we demand that essentially that the content that they create is theirs. It's got to come from them. And, you know, the ideas and the humor and the way that we write, it's really, really important that we maintain that. But what I'm seeing here right now is that I could actually teach this model to do that and still remain very authentic in its approach. And you would never be able to tell the difference between something that has been AI generated and something that hasn't. Um, 100%. That's correct. Yeah. Pretty damn freaking scary. But at the same time, <laughs> like you said, you still need that human interaction. You still need kind of like yeah. the, the, the system checker, which is ultimately the human eye. And it's the all limitations to AI. And, and, and I still find it extremely fascinating that Obviously, we've. I think we have just begun this journey. Um, you know, Nvidia is doing what it's doing in the markets for a reason. We're seeing it play out every day, and really, really enjoyed getting an insight into what it is that you guys have been doing. Um, yeah, well done. It's Can really I, cool to. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I, I, I want well. to. I want to add some final thoughts on that comment. Yes, if you mind. yes. So the way that I see it is by replacing one art for other. For instance, in, in the example that you gave us, writing articles is an art, right? Yes. And you don't want to lose that human touch or that particular mm -hmm. art on the way that you write articles. But what you are doing with the skillful is actually replacing the art of uh, writing articles with the art of training AI that write articles in the way that you like. So all of that customization or all all of those styles, sense of humor, or whatever you like to include in the articles, you are actually not losing it. It's not that you are replacing it with a generic AI solution. You are actually encapsulating all of those details into an AI that is able just to do it in a faster way that you will actually do. But the art of writing articles has evolved to actually teach an AI how to write articles, and the art is still there. So I, 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 I would be super disappointed if if we are just seeing this as a generic AI solution because yes. for, from my perspective the human skills are always necessary and it's what makes us unique so what we are, are enabling is just to share that skill set with the AIs that yes. will assist you in certain tasks yeah I love I love the fact that you are personally passionate about this this perspective because you obviously see the importance of that individuality and obviously that creative process. And, and it's it's very important that you did bring it up. So thanks for that, because there was like this little like like aspect of fear from my side of it. But more of like 
not necessarily a fear of of our product being a threat. It was more a fear of losing something that is intrinsically mine or yours or Zoltan's, you know, and, and clearly that's not the yeah. intention here, which is obviously really cool. So thanks for adding that. Um, and I think on that note, thank you for joining. It's been an absolute pleasure to to sit and chat with you guys about what it is that you guys are doing. And, and yeah, I love it. I think it's really, really positive. Um, and for all the right reasons, it seems, you know, like there is, there is a whole lot of boxes that are being ticked here. Good luck with it. Um, I think in many ways, you guys are probably way ahead of your, of like this AI trajectory. But I think that's the whole point of why we're in this crypto space. And, um, you know, obviously the decentralization aspect of everything. I know that we didn't touch much on it, but I think at the end of the day, that's why you guys are here. You know, it's kind of like ownership is yours. It's a decentralized space. Um, there's not some corporation sitting there that's, kind of like dishing this information out and i think that's also a very positive thing um so yeah thanks gentlemen it's been an absolute pleasure i look forward to getting this one out there i've really enjoyed uh the topic and i've enjoyed your company and your passion and enthusiasm thank you very much likewise thank you so much cool guys uh thanks for joining us everyone um Please like and subscribe and yeah, we'll see you guys next time. Thank you for joining us. All right. Thanks for listening. If you enjoyed the show, please give us a like, subscribe and turn the notification bell on for next time. See ya.